All right, guys, as if we already don't have enough amazing adventures happening this summer, we've got something new from Planet Zoo. Look at this, look at this, oh, it kind of looks like a Minecraft temple, doesn't it? Oh, no. New African animals, new African animals. Oh my gosh, you guys, look how pretty it is. We are gonna be doing so much work in Sahula Sand Safari. <gasps> I actually love that path, it's so cool. But of course, what's the most important part of a Planet Zoo pack? The new animals, and that's a meerkat. That is a meerkat, my friends. All right, so as usual, that was ridiculously exciting because with each and every one of these Planet Zoo DLC packs, we get just little snippets of flavors from around the world of different architecture. Like, look at these, look at how cool these towers look. I cannot wait to see what this kind of like clay stonework appearance does for all of the creators and what they're gonna be putting out there into the world. It's gonna be so fun. And is that a new tree? I think there's some new trees. I think this is a new tree. Don't worry, I am on it. I am constantly searching for all of the new greenery. Though I have to say, this is such a pretty pack for the architecture. However, the thing that I really am the most excited about is definitely the new animals! And ironically enough, the new paths. I didn't really notice the new paths the first time I watched this announcement for the Africa pack, but I'm telling you guys, I really love these colors and I really love the path work. And also I love that it looks like judging from all of the just designs and knowing how Planet Zoo works, we probably have all sorts of different color palettes we can choose for, our, for these buildings. And I just love the idea of building these bright, beautiful, vibrant structures in a nice African setting. Oh, and look at the way you can make a little market. I'm such a sucker for making little markets like that. Also, I'm a sucker for adorable statues. And y'all see, one of the new animals right over here, actually two of the new animals right over here, we have a fennec fox statue. Yes, we will be talking more about fennec foxes and we will be talking more about this really cool looking dung beetle. Oh my goodness, in just a moment. But I wanted to go back through, just see if we can see anything new or anything that leaps out to you with sheer excitement. Oh my gosh, yeah, I'm definitely thinking those are new trees. I'm not 100% sure because we have so many plants now in Planet Zoo, which I love. That path, I adore that path. It's just vibrant and pretty and happy. I would be overjoyed to work somewhere like, you know, Sahula Sand Safari that had a path that looked like that. And I love this fencing. Oh my gosh, that I think that's official. <gasps> Is that official fencing? I think that might be official fencing because there's a door in it. Instead of having to like mock up our fences, that may be official fencing. I would be overjoyed about that. Truly and deeply overjoyed. Oh, all the pretty colors, vibrant. Look at the meerkat statues. Those are so cute. I really love them. I hope you can make them whatever colors you dream of. And I still cannot believe that my dream of meerkats has happened. That is one of the animals I have repeatedly told you guys that I have wanted to see in Planet Zoo for ages now, because come on, look at him. He's so freaking cute. And meerkats have such an amazing social society. They're ruled over by one like dominant female who is the only one to have the babies and they eat scorpions and have babysitters. And we're gonna be talking a lot about meerkats in just a second here. And here we go, a little bit more information for all of us about the Africa pack that is coming on in. I have to say for being one of the download packs, which means that we're going to have probably the usual, like I think it's around 10 US dollars. Ooh, that's really pretty, but around like 10 US dollars. And usually these packs come with four new habitat animals and one new exhibit animal. I believe that's the case this time around too. It's kind of a bold statement to, to call this like the Africa pack. And as we continue to move forward and we continue to watch the Planet Zoo DLC expand, we continue to watch all of the different animals that you can have in Planet Zoo just 
proliferate and end up at being added into the world over time, it's going to be kind of interesting to see how they're going to rename some of the packs when you have animals that are also from Africa, for instance, or also from South America. But all right, so what are the animals that we are getting? Well, you guys, there are indeed four habitat animals, three of which I have some fun pictures of for you, like this meerkat. So we are gonna be having meerkats and look at how cute they are. I love them. I can't wait to see them scurrying around and being adorable. I'm also really fascinated at the way that they dig. You can see they have their little dig spots. Meerkats create beautiful and elaborate little colony tunnels where they will have little nurseries where the whole family will live and meerkats are really fascinating they live in big groups that are called a mob a gang or a clan depending on how you want to describe a group of meerkats and sometimes those groups are like just as small as maybe three meerkats or maybe like a dominant female her mate in their first litter of pups but they often stay in family groups that can grow over time and those groups can become as large as 50 meerkats with just one breeding dominant female in charge of them all and the only one who should be having pups. Any of you guys who have ever watched Meerkat Manor know all of that and I hope that you are just as excited as I am to dive into creating our own version of Meerkat Manor, no doubt in Sahula Sand Safari and with the new timed challenge that will be arriving with with this DLC pack. That makes me really excited because as you guys know now, with the timed challenges, if you beat the challenge, you get a statue, which is so cool. And I still haven't earned any new ones. We're gonna have to do more of that for sure. But the other animals, and there are more, that come in this pack are actually going to be the Southern White Rhino. We do already have one rhino species, but it belongs to Asia. So I'm very excited to have the Southern White Rhino. The Southern White Rhino is the companion subspecies to the Northern White Rhino. And you guys have probably heard about the Northern White Rhino because it is the subspecies of rhino that only has two surviving members both females a mother and her daughter they are the only surviving members of their entire species in the world just two of them which is really devastating however there are some amazing efforts going on with cloning experiments and with in vitro fertilization for our rhinos that i actually got to see firsthand when planet zoo shipped me out to the san diego zoo and i visited the frozen zoo it was a life-changing experience. So maybe in the future I will have some good news to share with you guys about the Northern White Rhino, but for now we will be able to work with the Southern White Rhino, who are basically their cousins under the White Rhino species. And thankfully the Southern White Rhino's population is far more robust than just two. And the last census in 2015 estimated that there are around 20 thousand southern white rhinos left in the world so thankfully that's a much higher number than two and it'll be really fun to have them in our zoo because i believe they are not nearly as timid and i've met some of them in person and they love being in big groups by the way they found out that white rhinos in particular were not apt to breed in captivity or be very happy unless there were at least a group i think it was either seven or 17 females together like the females really love to live in family groups with the white rhino and i just thought that was really adorable so we'll have a chance to add them into our zoo as well i think they're not nearly as shy as the asian rhino so maybe they'll be just super comfy maybe they'll be hanging out with each other Ooh, look at how beautiful that is they look gorgeous from above look at this cute little town we are going to be doing so much to change the hula sand safari i cannot wait and then of course the third habitat species that is going to be coming on in is one that I know so many of you guys are going to be freaking out about. It's the finnick fox. And finnick foxes are not only extremely energetic and adorable, but they have the biggest ears in relation to their body size of any member of the canid family tree. But you might wonder, like, why are their ears so big? That's actually one of the things that I was so curious about growing up. And I learned that the ears on finnick foxes are so large 
because it helps them sense prey with super hearing who are on the shifting sands. They usually are in very sandy areas where they make their burrows and they make their lives. And if they can use those big giant ears, they can narrow in on where prey might be moving across the sand, which as you can imagine, walking on sand is a very quiet endeavor. So that helps them to find their prey and just like other canids, the fennec fox cannot actually sweat. We can sweat when it's a hot day and that sweat actually really helps us to cool off because then the moisture on our skin gets the smallest little breeze and it makes it cooler and we can actually physically cool our bodies down through sweat. Dogs cannot do that. That's why they can get overheated and they pant so much. And one of the ways that the fennec fox tries to help out with living in a hot environment is that over a long period of time, they have also evolved these ears to help them to dispel a body heat. So when it's a really, really sunny hot day, as it often is where the fennec foxes live in the wild, then some of that heat will actually get sent out through the surface area of their ears. That's just like what the elephants do as well. We've talked about that before too. So good job, elephantic foxes. Also, they get a new enrichment toy that's coming with this pack and it's a tennis ball. <laughs> Isn't that so freaking cute? Oh my gosh. Oh, but those are three of the four habitat animals that are coming. And the fourth habitat animal is not pictured, but I actually think it's really freaking amazing because it's the African penguin. And yes, there are penguins in Africa. That was like the first question that our Patreon patrons over on the Patreon Discord started talking about. And there are actually many species of penguin in Africa. The African penguin is also known as the Cape penguin, uh, or a, another name that I can't actually, like, if you're a grown up, you can look up the other names that they call the African penguin by. I can't repeat it on YouTube, but let's just say it sounds like a donkey. So he has a name that refers to words for donkeys. Uh, but anyway, the African penguin is only found off the southwestern coast of Africa, where they live in colonies that are spread out across 24 different islands. So they are not, not all penguins are gonna live in Antarctica and not all penguins are going to live where it snows. These guys actually hang out on really rocky islands where they live in big, loud colonies. I mean, very loud. If you've ever heard a donkey-like braying from a penguin, it's these guys. So I'm a little intrigued what's it, what it's gonna be like to actually put them in our zoo because I think they're gonna be pretty noisy noisy but I think it's gonna be really fun to have the opportunity to bring in some African animals that center on the water for once like I guess we have hippo and we have the crocodiles but the penguins offer something completely different to think about being in the waters of Africa so that's gonna be really fun and then finally there is one new exhibit creature that I actually freaked out about. This is gonna sound weird. This is gonna sound really weird. But those of you guys who have known me for a long time know that this is straight up my alley. My friends, we are getting the sacred scarab beetle. That means a dung beetle. We are getting a species of dung beetle. That is so exciting. I find scarab beetles to be completely fascinating. I mean, come on, most beetles just kind of sit on the side of a tree or something. And the scarab beetle goes around collecting up dung and rolling it into a big old ball so that it can like have a nursery. Did you guys know that the uh, sca sacred scarab beetle makes that dung ball so that the female can actually dig herself a little tunnel. She pushes the dung ball in there and then she will lay a single egg inside of that large dung ball so that when the baby hatches, it will have plenty of dung to eat. Sounds really gross, but we all need to have that ecology web filled out at every layer. So just like vultures, sacred scarab beetles are doing a very important work cleaning up all of that dung. And we, we've we been waiting to add dung beetles in Sahula Sand Safari for quite some time, as you guys know. So I'm really excited about that. And when I was doing some more research about the sacred scarab beetle, one thing that just blew me out of the water is that they are very slow breeders. I'm so used to thinking about insects as being able to have a bazillion babies, right? Because they form such a huge part of the food web of the world and there's so many insects out there, right? Well, not the scarab beetle. The scarab beetle is lucky if one female is able to lay six eggs in her lifetime. Think about that. 
Like, this is a beetle who's going to have basically as many kids as humans do at this stage. Like, she's just gonna be lucky if she gets to lay six eggs and that they all hatch into beetles, which blew my mind. Hopefully we'll learn a lot more wonderful things about her and all of the other wonderful animals coming into the Africa pack with its release next Monday? Next Tuesday! I think next Tuesday, the, the 22nd of June. What I don't do calendars anymore. That, then you're on your own for that, figuring out which day it is wherever you are. Uh, but it's going to be on the 22nd of June, so coming right around the corner. And we are going to really have some fun. Meerkats really love digging up their new surroundings, literally. Just as they do in the wild, they'll use their sharp claws to bear, to bur, uh, to burrow, bury holes? Huh, I think that's supposed to be to burrow holes. Then dive in and pop out elsewhere. So I don't think you can see like inside of the meerkat like digging, but maybe you can, I wonder if you can follow them into the hole, like in the little camera and you can see them go through the little tunnel because I would love to do that. And then we can also enjoy the new curio ball enrichment item for the African penguins. And we can watch the Southern white rhinos bespoke sprinkler interactions. Remind me once we start recording some episodes on the new challenge zoo to tell you guys about the time that I watched a bunch of zookeepers summon some rhinos in by basically doing a suey with them and being like rhinos. They came running, they played in the mud and they are just giant puppies. They're tank puppies, trust me. But we're going to be having a great time with 180 new scenery pieces. I love how the word bespoke has been used several times. Uh, and we are also going to be enjoying a new challenge zoo where we're going to have a bazaar. Oh, doesn't that sound amazing? We can go to the challenge zoo and say that we're trying to learn what we can about it to revive the villages that we have in the uh, Sahula Sands Research and Ruins Archaeology Expedition which has been one of our longer running zoos that we've been doing in Planet Zoo, and I cannot wait to revisit with all of you guys. So that's gonna be a lot of fun, and it's coming really soon. But that's not all, friends. Nope. There's also an update. As usual, Planet Zoo is releasing a fantastically huge and wonderful new update on the same day, I believe. Yep, June 22nd. Good luck figuring out when, but what day that is. Like I said, I've given up on calendars. Uh, but we're going to be enjoying the new 1.6 update, same day release, where we're going to be able to enjoy a brand new free-timed scenario that just blew my mind because we will be taking over an animal reserve and we're trying to provide forever homes to diverse species rescued from Guatemala. As a fun twist, there are no animals in the Trade Center for you to purchase. Instead, rescued animals are going to be gifted to us on a timer. New animals will continue to be delivered throughout the scenario, which adds an increasing level of difficulty as you adapt to provide the best conditions possible. Your main focus in this new zoo is going to be on animal welfare. I love that, you guys. I really hope we see more things like this where maybe you can sign up for some of your your franchise zoos to participate in a rescue animal expeditions i would love to see that be something that you can maybe optionally opt into for your franchise zoos um especially if you know most of the time you get a sickly animal so it's not like you're getting a free animal that's really going to make or break your franchise but i just Oh, I love that so much. That's what we're all about here in the pixel biology community. So this update, that will be provided to everybody. So even if you aren't interested in the new African pack, you can definitely enjoy rescuing some diverse species from Guatemala, which I love. And then also if you like bears, will their bear be a update for them as well? They can now swim, which is gonna be fantastic for our polar bears. I always thought that was really weird how they didn't do deep diving and swimming. And now polar bears, grizzly bears, formosan black bears, and the sun bears are going to have beautiful new swimming animations and they are going to be able to dive into the water, which is fantastic. There's some sandbox updates for those of you who are deeply into sandbox updates. And there's two new features that I'm really excited about for our franchises, one of which is a webcam. <laughs> Like what? Do you guys remember that cute giraffe cam webcam overlay that we have for our streams when we are doing Minecraft streams? 
I love it. And now we can add new webcams into habitats. So you can go ahead and set them up and then kind of like flip through the webcams. They can move 80 degrees and then you can go ahead and you can see what's going on in your animals exhibits at like different areas. You can upgrade them with night vision so that you can monitor nocturnal animals. And you can actually go ahead and have like on-screen elements like security cameras so you know which camera you're looking at. I just think that's so much fun. There's also um, a marketing boost to zoos whenever you install a webcam. Like you can look at the live feed webcams in real life in so many zoos right now. I adore this. I adore the idea that every now and then you can just take a quick break and you can like cycle through the webcams to kind of get like a really on the ground view of how the animals are living and how they're doing. That's really cool. And then another really amazing new thing that I can't wait to come in this update is the Vista Points. So if you want to give your guest a stunning sight, try using the new Vista Points asset. Here's how they work. You place one down on a path and link it to a building, scenery, enrichment item, or habitat to give the guest a place to move to, stand, and view that area. So if you've noticed like your guests are never going to these spots that are prettiest, you can now guide them to the well-manicured and beautiful gardens of your zoo so that they can have the best, most stunning view from that location. They will receive a happiness boost based on the scenery rating of the vista they're looking at, and that way you can kind of make those focal points that can also drive traffic as well so that the guest just won't default to standing like in front of a rock and be like I can't see the animals which I think sounds fantastic there's several quality of life features um the one I'll only point out one for right now but the one that made me screech with joy is that all animal storage locations are now 200 animals <laughs> We no longer are lifted, like limited to just 50 animals. We can have 200 animals. I am so pleased with that. So all right, guys, there's quite a bit coming. Like I said, even if you are not into the amazing wonders of meerkats, well, one, I'm a little bit concerned for the amount of joy in your life, but... I can accept that we all like different things. But two, there's going to be diving bears, webcams, vista points, and a rescue zoo that you can actually participate in. This is going to be amazing. So all right, guys, let me know what you think about the upcoming pack, about the fact that meerkats are so freaking adorable. Um, or, you know, why they aren't, if that happens to not be a statement that you agree with, then I won't judge you, I promise. <clears throat> and if you would like to join us on this and literally thousands of new adventures, do please consider subscribing. But most importantly, my friends, stay curious, and I will see you maybe next Tuesday, whatever day that is, when we go on more adventures with meerkats. <laughs> So I'll see you guys then. Stay curious, guys. Bye-bye.